Tonight, a thousand Muslim refugees took turns sexually assaulting 80 women in Germany. A thousand men. I've got the details. It's January 5th, and you're watching The Ezra Levant Show. Why should others go to jail Why? when you're a biggest carbon Ezra. consumer I know? There's 8,500 customers here, and you won't give them an answer. You come here once a year with a sign, and you feel morally superior. The only thing I have to say to the government for why I publish it is because it's my bloody right to do so. Here's a picture of Muslim migrants walking across Europe. They're near the village of Berkosovo in Serbia. So they're not in a war zone. They're many miles from Syria. They're safe. But they're moving through Eastern Europe, going towards Western or Northern Europe, the countries with the richest welfare. But take a look at this photo a little more closely. Seven healthy, young, single men, military age, with warm coats covering them from the rain, good shoes. And then there's one woman amongst them holding a baby in her arms. And if you look carefully, you can see there's another baby holding onto her back and another child walking with her and she's holding a bag. Oh, and she has no shoes on. And these young men are just fine with that. Just fine with the one woman amongst them going barefoot on a road in the rain, literally lifting two children and a bag. And not one of the men offering to carry a child or if she wouldn't let them touch a child, even just to carry her bag, let alone to offer her shoes. But look, why is that a surprise? In most Muslim countries, women have second-class status, religiously, legally, politically, economically. Why would they treat her any better now that they're in Serbia than they did back in Syria? But my main point in showing you this picture is to remind you that the people streaming into Europe are overwhelmingly young Muslim men with certain, certain ideas about the relationship between the sexes. In Hungary, it's 81% young men who are the migrants, so that photo times 100,000. So what happens when these men, these sexists, get to their new Mecca, Germany? More than a million migrants has passed you alone, overwhelmingly young men. They don't speak German. Many aren't even literate in Arabic. They have no real job skills. And anyways, they're coming for the benefits, not the work. So what happens when you have five, six, seven hundred thousand young Muslim men just milling around Germany, bored? entitled, horny, in many ways free for the first time, free to drink alcohol but not yet used to it, free to misbehave sexually, at least against German girls, whereas back in Syria there would be a brother or a father to honor or kill them if they touched a girl. Seriously, what do you think happens in German cities like Hamburg or Cologne or a hundred other cities when you have countless unemployed, aggressive, sexist young men who come from a misogynist culture, and if they're religious, they also believe that Germans are infidels, kafirs in Arabic, inferior. Well, you get this. Here's a video of the German city of Cologne on New Year's Eve. Right outside the massive cathedral and train station downtown, Central Plaza, New Year's Eve, so, it, so it's a party night. Lots of Germans out for a celebration. And then 500 to 1,000 young single Muslim men come too, and they get drunk, and they're stupid. And they start setting off fireworks literally on the street, injuring people because, hey, why not? Things exploding in the street probably makes them feel like they're back home in their Syrian civil war. They're bringing a taste of Syria to Germany, setting off rockets and fires. They're drunk, they're horny because they're single young men who come from a sexually repressed country, and so they see pretty German girls out for New Year's Eve who aren't wearing burqas. And they're just infidel girls anyway, so they don't count for anything. So the 500 to 1,000 young Muslim men swarm these German girls, and they riot and they rape. Literally 80 German women said they were raped or sexually assaulted in Cologne, Germany alone on New Year's Eve. And it happened in Hamburg, Germany, too. Same thing. I mean, why would it be different? Imagine you're a 20-year-old Syrian man. You've been in town a few months. You're bored, horny. You hear it's going to be a fun New Year's Eve party in the center of town. You go there. You get drunk easily. There are a lot of women. And then the mob takes over. Everyone swarms the women. And you join in. And it's a mass sexual assault. Not quite Islamic State style, but everyone having a go of it. At least a grope like in Egypt's Tahrir Square, where NBC's reporter Laura Logan was covering a big Muslim Brotherhood rally. And then the mob decided, hey, let's, let's rape the white girl. And, and they did for 40 minutes. She describes how her team felt helpless to protect her against the powerful mob. Our camera battery went down. <laughs> 
and we had to stop for a moment and suddenly Baha looks at me and says, we've got to get out of here. Baha is not happy here? He's Egyptian, he speaks Arabic and he can hear what the crowd is saying. Yes. He understands what no one else in the crew understands. That's right. I thought, not only am I going to die here, but it's going to be just a torturous death that's going to go on forever and ever and ever. Logan said the assault, which lasted more than 40 minutes, was merciless. So why would you think that Muslim men who gang rape Western women in Arabia would suddenly change their views once they arrive in Germany? I mean, it's not just New Year's Eve, though, but that brought the mob mentality and the anonymity and the excitement and the opportunity. But it's all the time, too. Sweden is now the world's rape capital, overwhelmingly from Muslim migrants. Denmark and other European countries are talking about having sex ed classes for grown Muslim men, as in, hey, guys, if you see a pretty girl, don't rape her, okay? I wonder if they'll have exams in these classes. Here's a pretty girl, multiple choice. Can you rape her, yes or no? Okay, how about this pretty girl, yes or no? Yeah, maybe it would be better to screen out Muslim extremists, bigots, misogynists, etc. before they came, not after. So what did the media say about New Year's Eve? Well, they had to get a bit creative, don't you think? I mean, for months, the liberal media has been cheering mass Muslim immigration, open borders, first come, first served. I mean, it was how they signaled how virtuous they were. It was a bidding war, really. Will you take 100,000 Muslims? Do I hear 200,000? Who will take a million? So now when the obvious happens, they're a bit sheepish. I mean, here's the prestigious Telegraph newspaper of London. How do you write an entire article about a mass rape by 500 to 1,000 Muslim migrants without using the word Muslim? How do you do that? Here's the BBC, same thing. The BBC said, and I'm quoting, about 1,000 drunk and aggressive young men were involved, unquote. Yes, that's true, but is young really the most relevant characteristic of these people? Is that really it, that they were young? Nothing else is really important. Well, listen to the Justice Minister of Germany who felt like he finally had to make a statement on this mass assault. Seriously, something that hasn't been seen in Germany since the Second World War. Here's, listen to what he had to say. Das, was in Köln am Hauptbahnhof und an anderen Plätzen in Deutschland geschehen ist, ist nicht hinnehmbar, es darf sich nicht wiederholen. Und die Täter müssen bestraft werden. Dabei wird zu klären sein, ob das, was sich dort ereignet hat, eine neue Form organisierter Kriminalität ist, gegen die die staatliche Stellen auch Mittel ergreifen muss. Das jetzt zum Thema zu machen über Pauschalisierungen und zu verbinden mit dem Flüchtlingsthema ist nichts anderes als eine Instrumentalisierung. Jetzt geht es darum, die Fakten aufzuklären und daraus auch die notwendigen Schlüsse zu ziehen. Did you see that? 500 to 1,000 Muslim refugees riot and rape, but it's oversimplifying to connect it to refugees. That's misusing the conversation. Say what? They, they, they were the ones who did it? How is that oversimplifying? Did you hear his preferred explanation, though? He said, this just might be a new form of organized crime. Say what? So, so let me get this straight. 500 to 1,000 Muslim men rape or assault 80 German women in a drunken riot. 80 complainants, eyewitnesses, videotape. But Inspector Clouseau there says, no, 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 this looks like the work of organized crime. What, so like the mafia said, well, we make money off drugs and gambling and prostitution. Maybe we can make money off a mass rape across Germany by a thousand drunken migrants. The justice minister actually said that's his preferred theory. Of course it is. Remember what Dr. Daniel Pipes told us after the Paris Muslim attacks? As Muslim terrorism and Sharia law and sex crimes grow worse and worse, the 4P professionals will move further and further to the left just to hold the line. 4Ps, politicians, the press, professors, and police. So here you have a justice minister saying, pay no attention to the fact that it was 500 to 1,000 refugees. I think it's the mafia. Now, he's not crazy. He knows he's lying. He has to lie because the alternative is to admit that he and his boss, Angela Merkel, are destroying Germany by letting in a million Muslim men last year with plans for a million more this year. He knows there will be more rapes, not just in the street, but in private and maybe like in the city of Rotherham, UK, 1,400 rapes there. He knows it, but he's more afraid to say it 
and risk being called racist than to pretend it's organized crime. Angela Merkel and her justice minister have decided that if their political correctness causes a few rapes or a few hundred rapes or a few thousand rapes, well, that's just a sacrifice Germans will have to make for being a sensitive multicultural country. Oh, and you think that's not going to happen here? Stay with us for more.